December 7th, a day that'll live in, nope, wrong year. This is 1992, and it's just baseball. Former freshly fired baseball commissioner Faye Vincent giving his first interview to Bob Costas. Two guys talking about the integrity of the game, talking about Marge Schott and her racist comments and what would become a accelerated program of, of equality in Major League Baseball. Talking about what got Faye fired, which was dealing with the owners who did not care about the integrity of the game and were treating it purely as a business, even though they had that famous antitrust clause that made them not really like a business in a traditional sense. But you know what happens when people who are just business-minded instead of baseball-minded. Baseball's all that matters. Well, that's not true either. This is a really cool interview. Two guys that love baseball. Costas really loves baseball. And, and Faye Vincent was fed up. Listen why. Former baseball commissioner Faye Vincent is here. This is his first broadcast interview of any length, radio or television, since he resigned on Labor Day. At the time of your resignation, you said owners have a duty to take into consideration they own a part of America's national pastime in trust. This trust sometimes requires putting self-interest second. Do you see any reasonable prospect that that message got through then or ever will get through? I thought it was well said, though, didn't you? Oh, it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Oh, so that's the way this is going to go, huh? <laughs> I warned you. <laughs> I told you that I was uh, going to be enigmatic. When, when an Eddie Einhorn, uh, one of the owners of the White Sox, says, look, the romantics may not want to hear it, but baseball is not a religion. Baseball is a business. I'll give you what my reaction is. Knucklehead. It's both. It's both. And those who recognize it's if not religious, then certainly it's romantic and mystical aspects, have a better chance of running the business of it successfully because the two are intertwined. That's clearly right. Yeah, I think that uh, the wisdom of the ages is that uh, baseball's magic has made it unique. And it's unique in a number of respects. Uh, there's lots of talk about its unique attachment and the American public's unique attachment to baseball. I think that's its strength. It has a unique legal position under the uh, antitrust laws. And those, it seems to me, all are based on the perception that baseball is different. And I think to miss that fact and to try to argue that baseball is like another corporation or another business is going to be self-defeating. Will the old notion of what a commissioner should be hold? A guy who is selected, supposedly for his grasp of the industry and of the institution, a person whose judgment is trusted, a person who, yes, will work behind closed doors to try and forge a consensus, but who, in the absence of a consensus, makes a judgment, quote, in the best interests of baseball. Is that some romantic and anachronistic notion, or can that no, apply in the future? I, I, th I think it will hold, Bob, because I don't think there's any choice. I, with 28 individuals, um, it is very difficult to see how you can have governance. It's a huge committee. It's a very difficult uh, problem. They're, they're so different economically and personally that uh, they need uh, to come together. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to do without some central uh, leadership. I know you don't want to comment about issues presently on the front burner in baseball. You're no longer the commissioner. But you knew Marge Schott for a long time. She was the owner of the Cincinnati Reds for a long time. Is the sort of behavior she's accused of consistent with the Marge shot you knew? Well, um, let me say that I wasn't totally surprised that these issues came to light. Have you ever heard her use racial or religious slurs? Well, uh, I'm not going to answer that because I think it leads to the question of how many other owners have you heard use similar slurs? That and, is sort uh, of the next question. Yeah. Well, I went to the same school you did. <laughs> no, I don't think that's fair. Look, I think that uh, there are problems uh, in our society. Some of the owners suffer from the problems 
I would say to you, without limiting it strictly to marred shot, that we have owners who have severe alcohol problems. Uh, that causes aberrant behavior from time to time. And I don't know what baseball or a commissioner can really do about that. I mean, I've talked to people about it. Um, it's not unique to baseball, but uh, alcohol abuse and alcoholism are serious problems in this country, and it's, it's a concern. Harry Edwards was quoted the other day, the uh, sociology professor from Cal Berkeley, who has uh, for a long time been in the forefront of trying to improve circumstances for blacks in sports, uh, quoted in a way that surprised me the other day. He said, Uberoth, who was the guy that brought Edwards in, he said, Uberoth was a bottom line guy. Not so concerned with process, just could we get it done. And he set some things up in the wake of Al Campanis that led to some progress. Jamadi's heart was in the right place, but as an academic, he was overly concerned with process, and that bogged things down in terms of action. But Faye Vincent didn't have the energy, vision, or commitment to this cause to affect the kind of change uh, that we need. And that surprised me because I know this to be an issue that you worked on. Yeah, well, I'm the guy that terminated Harry Edwards' contract with baseball. Uh, I had a call from Don Baylor last night. Jerry Royster called me a week ago, and uh, Dusty Baker called me, all saying, we appreciate what you've done, and you made a big difference for us. Giving Royster and, uh, and Dusty Baker the managing jobs in the Fall League made a big difference. I hope Dusty gets the job with the Giants. So I think that... Uh, Edwards is just wrong. He has a particular problem because he was hired by Peter, and I concluded that he wasn't doing anything that was particularly helpful, and it wasn't worth continuing the arrangement. Um, and so I wouldn't expect him to be my strongest uh, supporter. I think on the merits, uh, if you talk to the people in baseball who, who know most, namely the blacks, they would tell you probably that... Uh, my record is pretty good. I guess the question that's now in people's minds because of the March shot thing is, how much of this racism is the kind of institutional racism which we've heard discussed for quite some time? The racism that, that isn't blatant, but just leads to the white guy getting the chance to manage at double A instead of the black guy, and so eventually uh, there, there are fewer opportunities for blacks in front office positions, managerial positions. That's a different kind of racism as opposed to the blatant bigotry that Marge Schott's comments, if true, indicate. How much of that blatant bigotry is out I, there? I don't think there's any more than there is in the country at large. I think, you know, if you look at corporate America, how many chief executives of the Fortune 500 companies are black? I think there's one. Uh, how many executive vice presidents of the top 50 companies are black, likely to be uh, chief executives? I know of very few. Baseball is particularly vulnerable. It's so visible, and, and we care so much about it, and we, and we have very high hopes for it. We want it to be perfect. Look, if we have six or seven managers in baseball who are black, people will say that's wonderful and that's great progress, and I will tell you it's not. It's fine, but it, it doesn't deal with the problem of there are no black general managers. There were very few AAA managers in the last two years who were black. Baseball has a long way to go, and I think it requires lots of commitment from ownership. I don't think there is much commitment from the owners. I think they are still willing to recognize that it's probably the right thing to do, but there isn't passion or commitment. Why are there so few third base coaches? Uh, nobody's really made an issue of that. Don Baylor hired Royster to be a third base coach. That's terrific. Baseball has lots of problems, and um, this is just one that requires a very long-term, persistent commitment. Maybe more passionate on this subject than most, but a lot of owners, it seems to me, have short-term ideas that are simply designed to come up with new streams of revenue to make up for past mistakes, and they involve measures that have nothing to do with the long-range best interests of the game. Example, realignment makes sense. It can make financial sense, and it can make the game more attractive. Interleague play, probably on a limited basis, makes sense. It would make it more attractive. There is only one reason to add an extra tier of playoffs. Pure, short-sighted greed. It doesn't add anything whatsoever to the appeal of the sport. In fact, it undermines its century-old integrity. Any owner who says, 
they should add another round of playoffs, is a bum. Thank you and good night. <laughs> You know the sort of thing I'm talking about. It doesn't sound like about. a question to me. It isn't just, and I don't think it was. It isn't, it isn't just that, it isn't just, I'm using that as an example. There are lots of issues like that where, where owners seem to, seem to latch on to an idea whose sole value is a temporary revenue stream. But the fact is the problem with baseball is on the expense side at the moment, and it's got to be dealt with by clubs. I mean, paying too much money for players will cause you to lose money. When you lose money, you become desperate. You become concerned. You do dumb things. You try to collude. Those are predictable responses. But the fundamental problem is if your revenues are X, you may not spend more than X, or you are in a very bad position. What do you think your biggest mistake was? Oh, I don't know. I made many. Uh, I don't know. What's your it biggest would depend on on what standard you were using. I mean, biggest mistake that caused problems with ownership, maybe one thing, biggest mistake, substantively biggest mistake uh, in terms of running the business. I mean, there, you'd have to go through them. I'll think about that. In, in terms of perception, if not the biggest, one that caused a problem, in the aftermath of the Steve Howe case, and most people watching are familiar with this, Steve Howe is in one form or another a seven-time loser uh, with drugs. Uh, he was under a, a strict uh, probation, but was allowed to pitch for the Yankees. Uh, he was arrested for attempting to purchase a small amount of cocaine during the offseason in Montana. Uh, you weighed the evidence. There was a hearing. Uh, you suspended him uh, for life, banned him for life from baseball. Subsequently, three Yankee officials, including Buck Showalter, the manager, Gene Michael, the general manager, were called into your office for a meeting. It happened to be late morning, and there was a day game against the Royals. They wound up being late for the game. It looked as if you were pushing them around, and there was a quote to the effect, since they had, they had testified on Howe's behalf, uh, there was a quote from you to the effect of, you should have checked your conscience and principles at the door, and you should have fallen in line with baseball's policy on this and it looked as if you were slapping these guys around and that hurt you well I, I think you're right I never said the quote but think about it from this point of view if you're a part of baseball and you sign a contract as everyone does you accept certain governing principles you accept some principles that NBC imposes and you know whatever your your conscience and whatever your independent independent attitude you are stuck NBC has got these principles uh, from my point of view, baseball has one drug policy. It, it is not possible for general managers or executives in baseball to say, well, I really don't agree with that policy. Uh, you, if that's your personal view, you say it, but you have to accept the consequences. But what if they're called to testify and on cross-examination they're asked questions and they, then they give the response? It's not like they call a press conference or went blabbing someplace well, on a street corner. My view about that is that it's the same with you. I mean, if I'm a policeman and I get called and I say, look, I really don't believe in the Fourth Amendment. I mean, I'm the chief of police in New York, and it really is annoying to have to get a warrant to bust into somebody's home. Fourth Amendment is a real pain in the neck. I mean, that may be your personal view, but you will be fired. You can't do that. And my, my point of view is that anybody in baseball who goes out and says, I don't agree with baseball's drug policy and I don't agree with baseball's policy on gambling, is in effect resigned. I don't mind you saying it, but you have to recognize that when you do it, there are consequences. Couldn't you have handled it in a way that headed off the confrontation, that gently reminded them of your position and maybe didn't do it while the clock was ticking before the first pitch of the game? Well, I, I must say, sure, I probably should have been more sensitive to the game issue. I didn't think that was a very big deal. Certainly only one of them, Showalter, was really involved in the game. The other two were executives. Um, I'm sure I could have done it differently and somewhat more gracefully. But to me, it was very important to make sure that people in baseball understood that these policies are very important. We, no institution can run with 26, 28 uh, views about something as important as drugs. Now, after you were out of office, George Nicolau, the arbitrator, overturned your decision. 
Steve Howe reinstated. Uh, you haven't made many public declarations uh, since you left office, but you did allow yourself one in that case, and you called it silly, I think, among other things. Well, it is. It was a bad piece of work. I mean, I think Nicolau is uh, a decent man, but I think this is his, his worst piece of work. I think it was badly thought through and not very well uh, structured, and I'm very critical of it. Uh, because what he said was, uh, look, if he does it one more time, he's out of baseball. And the reason I'm putting him back is because there's this theory about hyperactivity when you're a child that leads to drug abuse. Well, if that theory gets him number eight, how do we know there won't be a new theory next year that gets him number nine or a new theory that gets him number ten? The logic of the opinion is flawed. It is an inferior piece of work and I think, you know, deserves to be criticized this criticism of Faye Vincent. He made a lot of right decisions and had a lot of correct notions, but he got too autocratic. He got too arrogant and high-handed, and not only did this irritate some of the owners, but it put fear in them because they said, look, he might have been high-handed with George Steinbrenner, but we think George pretty much deserved it. But what if I'm next? Or, yeah, we think the Cubs should go to the West with the Cardinals, but if the National League bylaws say that the Cubs alone can veto that, and Faye says, no, in the best interest of baseball, I overrule it, what happens if it's my ox being gored next? And it was that approach, rather than the wisdom of your decisions, most of which people seem to agree with, it was that approach that scared them off. Well, I think that's probably correct. Not that I agree that I was high-handed or arrogant, but I think that making tough decisions does cause reaction. I think the sad phenomenon, and it's a phenomenon of American life, is that the result uh, is to go to court. And I think if I were to predict uh, what will happen in baseball and in all sports generally, anybody whose ox is gored, your phrase, will go to court. The Cubs went to court. Uh, there will be more litigation uh, on any major decision in baseball. if. Major League Baseball tries to reopen and some of the owners don't like it. Some of them have told me, we're going to court. Well, that, you have to reach the bottom. That phenomenon will have to go all the way down to the point where people recognize that's not the answer. The judges are not going to be good at making decisions about baseball. In retrospect, could you have done things differently in terms of approach that would have allowed you to accomplish the substantive things you wanted to accomplish but wouldn't have cost you your job? Well, if I weren't me. I mean, there's, there are ways to do that job that I couldn't do, and uh, I suppose if I were a different person, had different approaches, had different attitudes, maybe. But I don't have any uh, apologies. I made mistakes, um, and yet I think I uh, did a number of things very correctly. I think on most of the major issues, I was correct. And I think uh, a lot of the initiatives that I started will turn out to be important for baseball, international baseball. When I got there, there was none. Now there's a substantial business. So I think that uh, I did the best I could. I couldn't change what I was. I was not going to be an appeaser or a conciliator, and I wasn't going to duck issues. The, the big problem in baseball is if you run the job of commissioner looking to be reelected or to make people happy, you basically have to finesse most major uh, decisions. And why would I do that? That wasn't what I thought I was supposed to do, and I didn't. Have you had owners call you and say, Faye, it didn't have to turn out this way? You were uh, right about yeah, the sure. realignment, you were right about the expansion, you pushed for more minority hirings, you, you were right about Steve Howe. Uh, so you made these mistakes, but they weren't enough to do you in, but your approach did you in. No, I think, I think the the biggest problem I had was the perception that that I was soft on labor and they wanted to have a major confrontation and worried that I would interfere. Uh, that was the principle. Well, last and June. And the great iron, yes. Last June, June they wanted you to, to openly agree that you would not be involved in labor relations and you right. refused. That's right. And I think that was the principal problem. I think most of these owners are desperate. As I told you earlier, when you're losing money and you're in bad economic straits, you don't do... Uh, sound thinking and you do things that are not uh, smart and that's what happened and that is happening in baseball and I understand that and I think bad economics cause 
bad things to happen throughout this country. Uh, and when a businessman is losing money in his principal business and is feeling desperate, he gets very concerned. And he thinks we have to crush this union and this is our last chance and this is our one opportunity to destroy this bet noir that is causing all of baseball's problems. Well, it's childish. It's not going to happen. Two questions, then we're done. What do you miss the most? Well, it's too early, uh, Bob. I mean, I, if I were to predict, I think I would miss two things. I think I will miss spring training, uh, and I think I'll probably miss the Cooperstown weekend, which is always the, the nicest weekend of the year for me to uh, go up there and see the old-timers. Those will be two things I'll miss. What I won't miss is owners' meetings and, uh, and internal fighting and dealing with some of the people in baseball that I think uh, just do not have the same principles and commitment that I have. They're just different, different people. Are you angry toward any of them? No, because I, again, I think that it's almost predictable. Uh, all commissioners, each commissioner, is going to have this kind of problem. I think if you take the job, you know that you start with eight of them sort of against you, and eventually the number will increase. If you do the job, you are going to make enemies, and. Uh, I think you have to do it, and you have to recognize that over time uh, you will make a, a catalytic combination. So based on that, you think your buddy Bart Giamatti, as esteemed as he was, as eloquent as he was, eventually would have run afoul of them? Well, I think Bart, yes, I think he would have, although he, he probably would have moved on. I think Bart would have decided that he could do this job about a week into it, as he did, and then he was ready to do something else. He, his boredom level was very, very low. And uh, going through the Pete Rose case and watching him deal with lawyers and being accused of all those terrible things, I watched Bart and I realized that uh, he wasn't going to be around very long. Uh, I think Bart really would have been interested in a bigger stage and perhaps politics. Could you ever see yourself back in baseball in any capacity? You love the game. Well, no, I hope not. No. If you ever see me heading toward baseball, get a shotgun. <laughs> All right, so you won't work in baseball again, but when NBC gets baseball back, you can come visit us in the booth. <laughs> Open invitation. If you invite me. All right. Nice to see you. Hey, Thanks. Vincent, folks. See you later. Thanks for watching Cleveland Live Music. If you like staring into the sun with me, hit the subscribe button. There's Patreon and GoFundMe information in the video descriptions. Thanks for the support and thanks for making the channel grow.